Welcome to your grand new voices amplified. My name is Plot Marco, and I'm excited to be joining you guys. And today it's a different feast. I'm going to be speaking to a man that I'm accustomed to speaking to on the other side of the camera. You know, he's usually the one who is asking questions and speaking to me and stuff. But he's also one guy who gave me my first, first, first TV appearance on Heart of the Rhythm. I remember 2007. I got the first time to appear on TV, and that gave us sort of. Um, the entry into showbiz. So I'm privileged and humbled to have Chuck Gnosis, Chuck Aisha uh, on ear ground. You have Which come a Chuck? long way. You've come a long way, Plot. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, part of the struggle, I, I would want you later on to share a bit, but there's a lot of the struggle that people are not familiar to, that you saw, uh, you grew me, you, 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 you saw me, uh, and, you know, you held my hand on so many occasions. And today I'm proud to say I'm where I am because of you and a few other people that have contributed to my journey. I'm glad to have been able to help at that time, you know, because the, back then it was, the economy wasn't bad, so you know, the passion was real. We, yeah. could afford, we could afford to do certain things, we could afford to experiment with certain things and not really worry about where our next meal was coming from. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Uh, it was always passion in the beginning. It paid off in the end. I mean, look at me now. It paid off yeah, in the yeah. end. Back then, we were not really working for money. We just loved doing it. You know what I mean? Remember when we had that after party at my house? <laughs> 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 we had a bus. We had a Zippo bus parked outside my house. <laughs> with people from all over Zimbabwe because of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was that was one of the biggest parties in entertainment. And, also, and do you know that I slept outside? Do you know like I slept outside? I just slept on the just by the door because there were guys. Uh, I remember the guys from Blawai. Yeah. I was supposed to go the next morning, but apparently I don't managed to pay everybody. Yeah. So, yeah. And some of them were not happy because we had not managed to organize yeah. this accommodation. We asked them to party instead. Until the morning. You know Until I mean? the morning. And my lawn. My lawn never recovered after that. The, the flowers, the grass, everything died instantly. But listen, these are some of the things that we can talk about. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was your event at the end of the day. It ended up at my house with a great time. True, true. Look how far Jubilee has come now. Look how far. Mm -hmm. People don't wow. know how you started. You know what I mean? But yeah, well I done. People have no idea. Yeah, well done. Well done. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. And, um, you talked about passion. This is what uh, pushed you from the early days uh, that the struggle was less than, but what was pushing you was the passion. Yeah. Um, I, I, I remember seeing you first on TV, it was the connection and then later on out of the rhythm. But let's take back to Chuck Aisha, you know, yeah. diagnosis as a kid. What was your early childhood days like? I was a very mischievous boy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I used to drive my parents up the wall. 
And I mean, I was, I was not really interested in school. Yeah. Um, I was always into music. You know what I mean? I was a prince at school. Yeah. Uh, a P boy. So we we actually formed a percussion band where we used to play drums. We used to have a, a Japanese teacher back then who used to teach us how to play the drums. So we had a percussion group. And in my stream, the likes of Stunner was in my stream. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, wow. Stunner was in my stream. If you remember Tricks and Games. Yes, Tricks and Games. Back then, same stream. Um, mm. Shiwonisu Mariah is youngest brother, Z. He's yes. a rapper based in, in the States. We're all on the same stream. You know what I mean? So that year, there was a lot of hip hop heads in the same stream. You know what I mean? The same wow. stream. Wow. So music has always been with me. You know what I mean? It's always been with me. So then after, after high school and after college and all of that, um, you sit back and you're trying to look for a job. You're trying to put your life together. Uh, you got one year at home, two years at home, and you're like, ah, uh, I'm growing old. And you know your old man will be looking at you every day like, you go get a job or what? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. And television just came calling. Um, they needed a presenter for a show on, the, on ZTV. Okay. And I just had to be there. You know what I mean? I didn't go for auditions or anything. Oh, wow. I be there. Uh, blessed Mfandaiza. Yes. Big up to him. Yeah, he gave me my first break on TV. Uh, he actually, he saw it in me. He's like, you have a way of talking without pausing. Your vocabulary is just on point. Can you do this? You know I mean? I'm, like, I'm like, where's the script? He's like, just do, just do quickly. You know I, mean? so I went on and who are we going to interview? Uh, e Marshall Shiri. Yeah. E Marshall Shiri. Oh, and I'm oh, like, no. Yes, I'm like, guys, what? We got no script. It's like, yeah, he's this and that, you know. We get there, I'm panicking. My lips are dry. My throat is dry. We get in there. It's a serious man, military guy, all colors sitting there, all serious and ten, looking at me. He's like, eh, my father, time go too fast. I need to go. I'm like, what? And I mean, but the moment I did the introduction, the moment I introduced myself and I introduced him, everything was just flowing. You know what I mean? Wow, and then wow. I did uh, the police commissioner, uh, Shiri. Uh, sorry, um, uh, Shiri. Shiri. Yes. I, was, uh, I did, uh, what was his name? Parinyatwa, the Minister yes. of Health. Yes. I did some, I did my first break on television. I did the biggest names. So it wasn't hip hop. It wasn't out of the region. It wasn't entertainment. No, hip hop. Um, hip hop was always there. It was always in the background. I actually relocated to Bulawayo for two years to yeah. work on an album called Temperature Rising because I it's felt, right. yeah, I remember I felt that the people in Bulawayo were more, uh, what is the right word? Um, I'm trying to look for the right word, but people in Bulawayo had raw talent. They were yeah, very yeah. cultured. Musically, they were gifted. So I moved into the studio, uh, Cat House Studios, which was owned by a radio personality back then. His name was Felix the Cat. Oh, Felix and Guy. Yeah. Ah, it was good. called Cat. Yeah, it was called Cat House Studios. It was his studio. So that's why we moved in. And we used to put money together and buy breakfast, yeah, uh, yeah. Bread, beans, <laughs> eggs. And it was uh, like five guys living in the house, and everybody was a musician. So we set a raid. We'd go to Zambia and collaborate with Zambian cats and mm -hmm. finally finished the project. I packaged it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Came back to Harare and I'm like, this is the good stuff, guys. Trust me. This is not the usual hip hop in Harare. I went there, I cleared my mind, and I came back with the baddest ever. Wow, wow. Then when I came back, there was a lot of Chamembe. Yeah, Gutiro. Yeah. yeah, so. Urban grooves at the forehand, and us. We were told we sound too American back then. You know what I mean? Which was, well, I mean, we, I grew up listening to Lost Boys and Wu Tang Clan on ZTV. Yeah, yeah. TV well, used to, yeah, yeah. ZTV used to play hardcore hip hop, dust effect, wrestling effects, the big smalls, two pack, Z Nas. This was ZBC. This was radio, even Radio Three back then. But how, come, but how come, I mean, then you were told, I mean, hip-hop artists were told, like, you guys are sounding too American. When we had a lot of, you know, rest in peace, uh, Peter Jones, I mean, yeah. he played exactly. a lot of... Yeah. 
there was a lot of change in politics then. You remember, there's a lot of 75% local, 100% local, but we didn't get the airplay. We yeah. only got graveyard shift. And I like to big up Davis Mugaza and uh, and uh, what's Kumodi and uh, what's his name? DJ Squilla. You know oh, what I mean? Yes. Yeah, 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 DJ Squilla almost got fired once because of me. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> you know for real. Yeah, we gave him, we get, we begged him like, Dad, please, you need to play this. This is hot. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he played it over and over again. It never went through the system, the right channels. You know what I mean? Yeah, we went, yeah, yeah. Radio, gave him the CD. We waited outside in the car, like, please play this. People need to hear this. And wow. Wow. it just blew up like that. It was a track that I did with P.O.Y. from Below yeah, yeah. and and Chi Chi from uh, Africa Revenge. Um, made a lot of noise, never made a cent from it, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then the passion was there. But I mean, would you say that the DJs had a different attitude then, or things have changed? Oh, the DJs back then, I'm not saying anything about the DJs now, but I'm saying the DJs back then, they were, we could interact with them easily, and they were, uh, what can I say? They were into music. Like I said, back then, everybody was relaxed. The economy was dope. You know what I mean? We had problems. Everything was dope. So everybody wanted the real stuff fast. Like, I'm the first one to get this. I'm the first one to release that. So they used to compete. They would call us like, what do you have? I need something new. I need something fresh. You know what I mean? Wow. Wow. Back then, DJs would look for you to get to get music from you. You know what I mean? They'll look for you. And they'll call you. I'm like, ah, give me two weeks. And I'll mix some, mix some bichana. Yes, you know, yes. I'll bring it to you. And then I'm not saying anything bad about the DJs now, but yeah. I had personal relationship with a lot of the DJs back then, like uh, Dave Mugaza. We'll go and chill in the studio yeah, with yeah. his hang, you know what I mean? Wow. And, and then fast forward now, yeah. from the connection, now we are on Heart of how, the Rhythm. Tell us how that started, how you created that concept. Uh, it wasn't my concept. Heart of the Rhythm used to belong to Zimbabwe Music Awards. It was oh, a Zima. Wow, Zima. Yes. It was a Zima project. Yes. Oh, Shut man. down. Yeah. And um, uh, Mr. Nyazayo, uh, President's yes. personal. Joseph Nyazayo, yes, yes. yes. That was the project. And Tich Mataz used to be the presenter for that show. Yeah. So they had a fallout with Tich. And then they started looking, I think, for the next presenter for the show. And I just came out of uh, the connection. Yes. And I yes. think back then there were two presenters that were really hot. That was myself. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I ain't trying to brag. That was no, myself. but for real, yeah. And um, Mr. Rims. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was you and Mr. Rims. I so remember. We used, we used to uh, juggle a bit. He had the upper hand because he could speak Shona and in Debele. And I didn't mm. get a lot of the gigs because I was one, I'm Ghanaian, and my Shona mm. was really bad. You know what I mean? So it was all in yeah. English all the time. And then um, Tish did not show up for an interview. They called me. I went in. It was a uh, job lying on the table. Did the interview. <laughs> I think it was Tongai Moyo or somebody. Yeah. Tongai yeah. Moyo, Hosai Chipanga, Oliver Mtukuzi, all the big names. We did them all. And round. Boom, boom, done. The next day they called me, yo, do you want this job? And there's not a lot of money in it, uh, but it will give you that exposure and, you know, it will give you that stepping stone. I'm like, why not? You know, jumped in. I was getting a lot of fame, but at the same time, I was learning. I was learning. I was learning. Wow. To the extent wow. whereby my mom and my dad were like, you know what? Why don't you do your own TV show? Then they started, they bought me gear, you know, cameras and computers yes. and stuff. And I stopped going because they could see the passion that I had for this. You know what I mean? Then um, part of the rhythm went on and on and on. I mean, we did a lot. I used to go everywhere in Zim. If there was raw talent in Zim, we would go and find it. If it was the late video that was done, we made sure we were the first to play it. You know what I mean? And yeah. I loved it. I, I loved bringing in new guys, new talent to TV to showcase themselves so that people, the rest of Zimbabwe could see. And then I loved doing it. You know what I mean? I never got money for how yes. of the rhythm. Real talk. The wow. money never, the money never came, but it, it, it put me out there. People got to know me. So it was easy for me to knock on any door and get a contract or walk into any office and shake your hands with the right person. But it put yes. me out. 
You know what I mean? That's what I, I can say I benefited from television. It put me out there. You know what I mean? And I loved it. You know, and then um, it came of age, got boring. Television got boring. And then you, know? you st- and then you paused and then you decided to introduce another show. Uh, I, 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 with Chuck. Yeah, because uh, like I say, Heart of the Rhythm was not mine. Okay. So I did my own thing. There's certain things that I could not do on Heart of the Rhythm because it was not my show. Okay. So I, yeah, I, I borrowed a bit of the concept, twisted it a bit, and then called it Entertainment with Chuck. And then that was like smooth thing. That's when I had sponsors coming in, and then I started getting paid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When it's actually paying, you know, <laughs> paying. You know what I mean? You don't get Zim Entertainment don't pay, but when you're calling. Like, <laughs> I don't want to marry, you know, you go, you know what I mean? You get paid. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, what, what, what I find quite interesting when there were a lot of signature things that were there on from both Heart of the Rhythm and then Entertainment with Chuck. I yeah. remember very well the billboard that we had for Heart of the Rhythm. Who made that? The billboard for Heart of the Rhythm up to today. Today? Yeah. Yes. Not shooting down any other graphic designers yeah, or pushing you. graphic but up to today is one of the best ever billboards done and that was yes, done by Carl Joshua Nguyen. Oh wow. Carl did that billboard and for your information Carl is one of the best animators, graphic people in this country. Oh man, I'm Don't get me away. No, he's a funny man he's into cooking and comedy <laughs> but Carl's real calling was motion graphics. Wow. And Cole at one point came under Carl. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you see, Carl's got such a diverse mind that he's he's doing like he's multitasking all the time. He's doing this, he's doing next. We might find Carl running for mayor. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, true, true. He's true. one of those. You know, people. What I like about Carl is his ambition, he's driven. I remember when he was doing like he was trying to break the Guinness record for you know many yeah. the most comic shows in a short space of time, and he was traveling. Yeah. And at one time he decided to just go on trips and he lived for a year without having accommodation where it's just yeah. he was touring. I'm like, where does he get that kind of drive and zeal to actually do? And then the next thing, I'm watching Nash TV and I see the credits Carl Joshua and the uh, graphics were Carl Joshua and I'm like, what? Okay. So yeah. this guy is, and I look at Nama, I see the gong designed by Carl Joshua and Nude. Yeah. The logos he directed Nama, the the uh, the very first ones when they were very bougie and successful. That was Carl doing. You know what I mean? He's got he's a he's got a creative mind. You know what I mean? Wow. Carl, he's in the wrong country right now. He's in the wrong place. Give him wings. Let, let him fly. That guy will amaze you. You know what I mean? So yeah, get you. Um, Heart of the Rhythm. He was actually behind it. I think he was also the brains behind it. If I'm not. Okay. If, mistaken yeah it was one of his projects for a company called tattoo he used tattoo to be media, the, yes i remember they used tat- to be at uh Eastgate. yes okay. was it i think no they started off at mount pleasant oh mount pleasant yeah I yeah. Media. yeah but i if i'm not wrong they started heart of the rhythm if i'm if oh, i'm yeah no. if i'm not wrong they started heart of the rhythm and it came and then um I mean, I had fun. I mean, I met big names, though. I brought shoulders with big names and, you know, exchanging yeah. numbers. And we didn't have selfies back then, but... Uh, <laughs> you know. but, but, I mean, one thing that also strikes me from the time that I got to meet you, I remember very well that um, you connected me. You plugged me to literally the entire showbiz scene. I remember uh, the first contacts of artists that I got a chance to speak to. I'd seen some before, but never really conversed with them. Rocky, yeah. Leonard Mafumo, um, Mafrik, uh, even the other dancers, you know, I definitely Basil and 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 um, Adrian. You know, you're plugging yeah. in. You knew all these people, and you're like, Flood, look, these are the people that you can work with. And yeah. you went on to uh, host, you know, Jibilika, and even <laughs> gave us space. You know, I, I'm thinking, you know, I, I can't really recall if we paid anything that was worth either the 10% of what you gave us, but you still did it. And right now I'm looking at the new dynamics right now. Nobody will go that far to do anything for anyone without getting credit, without saying presented by Boss Jackie. Who could have seen Boss Jackie on Jimmy Liga all the shows up to now. <laughs> Boss Jackie. <laughs> you know, now, now, now if, if, if somebody pays $50 to get an artist to record a song, the next thing is like, 
boss plot and then yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said earlier on when this interview started, back then it was all about the passion. Mm-hmm. Back mm-hmm. then, one, it was the passion. I was passion driven. Yeah. Second, mm-hmm. I was hungry to be the first to have this kind of content. Okay. You get okay. me? Yeah. I want to be number one. So I would not sleep. If there was somebody in Cholocho, and thought, yeah. I would get there. If I didn't have money, I would borrow the money, hire a car, mm-hmm. and I would bring it. This is what made uh, Heart of the Rhythm so great. You know what I mean? Because we went everywhere. We made sure we brought Zimbabwe. Even those rappers from Makokoba. Yes. In, um, in Bulawayo. Nobody knew about them. But mm-hmm. some of the best MCs, the lyricists, are from Bulawayo. I can I can vouch for that. True, true, Those true. rappers in Bulawayo are lethal. You know what I mean? But how come, how come? I mean, th- I know this has been a very controversial conversation. It's going yeah. on right now because Lee Marconi just post, uh, commented in our conversation that, look, a lot of online shows that are happening at present, you don't yeah. find any artists apart from those that are from Arari. And then uh, people are coming in different points. But I mean, we have seen the industry grow for yeah. years, especially the urban movement. Um, yeah. There's still a big discrepancy when it comes to voices on the national platform, on the national radar. Uh, yeah. There's maybe one or two every year. You might have Calvin there, and then you have SF there, but not so many, you know, outside, not only from Blawai, but also from Tare or other places. But you know, in Tare, we've got Technique, we've got Flakes, we've got, uh, yeah. there, there's so many artists across Zimbabwe. But if you're not in Arare or if you're not from Arare, then you might struggle. What's your sentiment to that? First of all, it's like that worldwide. In every country, there's one one central area where shit pops off. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Zimbabwe is Harare. It's the capital city. The radio stations are here. The televisions are here. Television station is here. South Africa is Johannesburg. United States, New York City. You know what I mean? Hot 97. You have to be on that show to actually get recognition. Uh, Star FM. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but the other thing is that, besides the first point that I said, Bulawayo people move at their own pace. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You need to understand them. I'm not trying to offend nobody, but I lived in Bulawayo for two years. And yeah. those guys, very talented. You know what I mean? They mm-hmm. part too hard, love and carry people, but they move at their own pace. Mm-hmm. You cannot mm-hmm. rush Bulawayo people. Whether Shona or in the village, the moment you cross that welcome to Bulawayo sign, yes. there's ease, you know, you're just, everything's yeah, it, like... It's small. It's small. Yeah. Food, uh, water, everything. They're not in a rush. You know what I mean? Everything just so... It's a drug at the end of the day because you inherit it also. You're in a hurry. You also get it, like... But when you come across to Harare, everything's fast. It's fast, you know what I mean? I would love to go and live in Bulawayo right now. I'm older now. You know, he's going to go there and fly with them also. But the thing is, getting back to that question that you said, it's it's not just Zimbabwe. If you're an artist, yeah, it's a personal decision that you need to make, that I want to make it. I'm in Rusapi. Yeah. What the hell is going on in Rusapi? You know what I mean? Yeah. Get up, yeah. get on the bus, we'll save some money, relocate to Harare. You know what I mean? Breast shoulders with the decision makers and, you know, try and get yourself a gig and stuff like that. Because it's got nothing to do with her, with uh, um, Harari being the central uh, hub of Zimbabwean entertainment, which it is, but it's, an, it's, a, personal, it's a personal decision that you need to take as, a, as an artist that do I want to make this? You know what I mean? Do I make it? Look at the population. The Harari population is also big. Yeah, I mean, true, there's true. a lot of people. There's a lot of people in Harare who can help you. you get me? Yeah, great, great. Yeah. And um, you, 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 now running Fiesta Fiesta. And yeah, it's one of the biggest joints, open air joints in Zimbabwe, right? Yeah, yeah. And one um, of the biggest. Okay. One of them. I said one of the biggest. <laughs> okay. One of the biggest joints. Yeah. Thank it you. Is, it is. It <laughs> is because I mean, look, I mean, there is. Fiesta, Fiesta, you know, there's cookout and then there's um, like bry out once in a while and then some Fiesta, Fiesta is happening every month. There's um, what's the other one? Unplugged, you know. Yeah. And I was talking to a friend and they were asking me, look, I'm in Harare for three weeks. 
where can I go? Where can I be? You know, especially weekends. Yeah. And these were the events that I was referring to them to. Uh, but yeah. tell us about that concept. What's the idea behind it and how successful has it been in your own perspective? Um, Fiesta Fiesta is like, it's, it's a family business. Yeah, family. As in, um, yeah, it's family. Let me leave it like that. It's family. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Fiesta is four years old now. It's been around for a very long time. You know what I mean? The team, the concept is really simple. It's, it's themed as in beats, boots, rye. Those are the three highlights, yeah? Hence, we have the most affordable beer, whiskeys and lagers that you can find in Zim. We're selling at pump price because we have a bar. We own a bottle store okay. that you never can catch. You know what I mean? Hence, we can reduce the prices of all these alcoholic beverages and stuff. Yeah. And then there's the, there's the bride bit where we had been sponsored by a cold home at one point in time yes. uh, to make sure that the quality of the food was on point, like good shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> yeah, you can say that. You can say that. Yeah. I, say that. Well, that's, that's I mean, but the nail on the head for Fiesta Fiesta now is the beats part because I love music. Yeah. So Fiesta yeah. was actually a platform which was made for DJs in Zimbabwe to come and showcase their talent. Okay, great. I mean, it was a DJ kind of setup that I would rotate DJs every now and then, you know, put them on, 30 minutes set, one hour set, get paid, because um, we didn't we didn't want the entertainment to be boring at all. Yes. So we made sure every DJ that came through had a certain type of genre that they played. Don't cross over. If you're playing dancehall, stick to dancehall. If you're playing old school R&B, stick to it. If you're playing house or I'm a piano, do that. So at the end of the day, if you're going to be at Fiesta from 12 midday in the afternoon to midnight, there's variety of music. You know what I mean? And, Apart from and, that. And talking about that variety, before you go, um, last week the conversation was about DJs and DJs not playing local music. Yeah. Uh, and there was a response uh, from one promoter who said, look, we're not getting... Uh, we cannot help out these DJs that I need right now because they're not gigs that are happening. Why? Because they're not playing local. So they should rather go and get money from Beyonce or from Ama Piano. What's your Yo, response to that? That's a very stupid thing to say. Whoever said that, I'm not calling him out, but I don't think he really thought about it before he answered that question. That's a very stupid thing to say. People might know me as a house DJ, but I do play a lot of local content. And what I say to most of these local artists is like, Shaman, Here's my number. Anything that's hot that you got, please send it to me. If it's hot, I will play it. You get me? I've got an ear too. I will listen to it. I'm like, oh, this is some bullshit. I'm going to play this. You know what I mean? Real talk. If it's hot, I will play it. And I've told, I've called musicians and told them, mm, this song, my guy, it won't work. This is going to embarrass you. Don't release this track. I'm also a producer, by the way, not just a TV presenter. Uh, Fiesta, Fiesta, but yeah, yeah. I'm by profession. So I've got an ear for these things. And we've got a lot of music. The problem with some of these local artists that we have, they become very cocky. You yeah. know what I mean? They become cocky and I don't think nose moves onto their foreheads and shit. You know what I mean? They become cocky. All I want is your music. Someone like that D will call yeah. me and tune Chuck. When my bundles are in, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm sending them. You get me? Yeah, yeah. What promote, what, uh, what can I say, management for these artists, they're supposed to have all the DJs in their phone. Mm -hmm. Create a WhatsApp group for us DJs that when the music comes out, send it out. Yeah. I don't want to go on YouTube looking for a song because I heard Ningi Ningi playing. I'm like, who's that? Oh, that's hot. And it's like, uh, uh, his name is Enzo. Just go on YouTube and type. It'll come out. No. <laughs> no. And then you download and, and then you convert and then you to MP3. Convert, compress, and then you lose the quality of the song. It comes out sound if I, Enzo's manager is supposed to look for us. He's supposed to have our numbers in his phone. Yeah. The yeah. same way they go to the radio stations to launch their albums when they go the um I had this on by standby. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> They go Those still exist. <laughs> yeah, I know. I got like uh, data files from way back that I'm trying ah, okay. to go through. I mean, you go to the radio station with a couple of CDs like this here, and you present the radio station, they'll give uh, KVG, uh, DJ Ningi Ningi, Patsani, you know what I mean? Yeah, Do yeah. the same for us DJs. Call me, 
if I'm available, where are you? We meet there. This is my latest track for my, from, this is the latest track for my artist. This song is like blah, blah, blah. This is the a cappella. You get me? Give me all the files. This is the a cappella. This is the instrumental. Let me even create a, a remix for you. You know what I mean? Let me, yeah. let me help. You don't have to pay me for this because I'm also getting the props. Could you, yeah. you hear the Chuck Norris remix of that Enzo track? It's banging. So we are, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. True, true, true. will give me some a cappellas of Ja Preza, XQ and all the artists. I love it because he knows I'm going to mess with them. I'm going to come out with a dope remix. Yeah. This is what promo, uh, managers of these artists are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to yeah. go in yeah. You do your research. Same way Plot is doing it. Plot won't just call you up. Plot will do his research and you're like, this interview true. is worth it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Do that. Who are the top DJs in Harare? Ningi, 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 ningi. Let's get their numbers. You know what I mean? Let's create a listening station. Guys, yeah, come through. True. My drinks, my drinks, my platter, my platter. What, what, what? We sit down, bang the track. We listen to it like, mm, good shit. I fucked this any day. You know what I mean? That's what they need to do. I must talk about the plant and the whiskey and shit, but you yeah. have that. Yeah, call me. We can meet halfway. If we cannot meet, email me the music. Send it to me. But when we try and talk to these managers of these artists, trying to be funny with me, you know what I mean? They're trying to be all Mr. This, Mr. Wah, wah, wah. It doesn't work like that. We are the ones who play in the clubs. We have the following. You drive Club. the music. We drive them exactly. Give me your music, and I know when to play it. I know when people come to me with memory sticks when I'm playing with Can you give me the latest track for Enzo? I'm like, no problem. I got it for free. I'm gonna give it to you for free. That's what they always get. You can't do music for the neighborhood or for your moms and dads or your family members. No, <laughs> that culture needs to stop. When you do music, you're doing it for the nation. Yeah, not for yourself. Exactly. I have big artists right now who will send me their music. They'll send it to me personally, like, Chuck, I'm giving this to you now. Don't release it yet. I'll tell you when to release it. Why? Because they know you're going to push it. Yeah, true, they true, know you're going to push it. So for us to help these artists there right now, they also need to help us by giving mm -hmm. us their music. I don't want to look for it. Don't make me hunt for it. When you're in Zimbabwe, you live in Zim, and I'm looking for you. No. No, hell no. <laughs> Quite no. interesting, though, but I mean, looking at uh, the discrepancies, look at um, what Nigeria has done and your home country, Ghana, has done when it comes to the yeah. music front. They've gone global. Their sound is global from hip hop to dance. Uh, look at Shatawale, look at Manifest. You know, I, I remember yeah. watching Manifest at Haifa. And if I'm to compare the live set, to yeah. what our hip hop boys are still doing. I'm not, yeah. not, not disrespect, uh, even what I saw AK do, even what I saw uh, Nasty C do in Arari. I, I'm still able to see a single hip hop artist in Zim who goes on stage and delivers that kind of. But what's your perception? Why, why do you think we are still behind? Why do you think we are struggling to get to where other countries are as far as music is concerned? First of all, Carl, uh, sorry, uh, plot. We don't have a hip hop culture in Zim. We have people who can rap, uh, who, and then we have people who want to rap. You get me? Yes. That's the first step. We don't have a hip hop culture. We had it back then when we used to go to book cafe uh, cipher sessions on a Wednesday night. Yeah. Where yeah. we didn't have it. So the movement, not the new movement now. There was a movement there, which was before all... Before the circle. Before the circle. Way before the circle. The movement run by Hajila. Um, we would be there. I mean, Hajila, all the... the guy who was in Cape Town who makes... The beard, the guy with the long beard. Yes. Yeah, wow. he was head of the movement. He formed the movement. And two compilations came out. Uh, Pungwe, I forgot the other one. These are... They were sold worldwide. He took all the the best songs in Zimbabwe and put them on two CDs and yeah. sold them worldwide. And I got recognition for like two songs on it. You get what I mean? But back then there was a culture. Book Cafe, Five Avenue Shops, OK, upstairs. We would go there every Wednesday night and just rap. Poets were there. 
open mic sessions. And back then, like I said, it was just the passion. It was raw. You know what I mean? It was really raw. And right now, um, hip hop never. There's never been a breakthrough for hip hop in Zim. Never. But last, but last year, we got a hip hop artist who won awards, who had um, top chatting songs. Isn't that sort of the break that's coming through? Who's that? Uh, Two guns. Top chatting way. Uh, on on radio and. Oh Zim, you talking about Zim? Yeah, I'm talking about Zim. Yeah. That's irrelevant to me. You know what I mean? If you're gonna be the number one hip hop head in Zimbabwe, I like to add monetary value to all of this here. Are you setting records? That's the question number one. Are people actually buying um, your, your, your CD? Are people actually going out to buy this CD? And how much is it? How many copies are you selling? You have a track record of this. Listen, anybody can be number one on Zimbabwe radio. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I can get all of Westgate right now to vote for me, for my song, and I'll be number one, topping the charts. By the end of the day, am I being paid for this? There's a lot of famous, famous, very famous musicians in Zimbabwe, and there's a, most of them are broke. Don't ask me for names. I know. Yeah. They broke, because most of them are trying to focus on the fame. Being an artist, being a musician is a business. Yeah? This, is, this is money. This, this is 17 cents, the cover, the CD, the content of the CD. This is, this is money. And then you sell it for $1.50. You do the math, the printing and everything. If you don't have this mindset, Kuti, my, my, I need to package my music and benefit actually for it. Then you're wasting your time. You're going to grow very old and broke, but very famous. These are some of the things. Yeah, one of the reasons why I stopped doing hip hop was that I was quick to sit back and analyze the whole situation. We're having problems with radio. Oh, we sound too American. Mm, they're not playing our music on prime time. Mm, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah. I, my family members are like, oh, this is dope, my nigga. Oh, this is banging. You know what I mean? <laughs> ah, you were. You know <laughs> Your whole family, the neighborhood. All the chicks were like, ah, Chucky, I know go now. I know you You get me? But you broke as hell. Real talk. You broke as hell. Niggas are broke out there. Don't think you call out names. I don't want to say out. Mm -mm. No, but, I, 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 but I, and I, was quick, I was quick to analyze that. You know what I mean? I sat down and I'm like, ah. You know what I mean? Where the hell am I going? And at that time, you're trying to get married, yeah? You're trying to get married. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're trying to get married. You're trying to start a family. And you got bills to pay because you're not living at home no more. You got a little bed seat and all them tins. You're trying to... But the only form of revenue that you're trying to get at is to sell records. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're not selling records. The genre you chose is not working. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not working. I mean, metaphysics... They don't even make money in Zimbabwe. All this stuff made them famous. And he made money when he went to Germany, where you is right now. You yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah. he could yes. He's part of one of Europe's the biggest, biggest bands. And people yeah. don't even know that. People don't even know that Suleiman Haim is a super huge, super successful, uh, multi-platinum selling band. He's one of the front men. He's singing there. They fill up stadiums, these people. You know what I mean? People don't know. And when it they comes back to what he tries to do joints and stuff, people are just like, oh, uh, they, they, they're not really being serious with him. Yeah. But exactly. Now, if metaphysics failed to make noise in Zimbabwe, yet he's one of the forefathers, one of the founding fathers of Zim hip hop, if he failed to do it in Zim, then who are we? And he keeps going and coming back. I've done, I think I've got about four tracks with him. It yeah. keeps coming back. We're trying to resuscitate it. By the end of the day, the economy also plays a huge role yeah, in the true. music industry. You know what I mean? It plays a studio time is expensive. You know what I mean? It's very expensive. And producers also, we don't have a lot of producers that can even read or write music. They're just making music. They ding, 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 and they put it out. And then the radio stations get the CD. Journey. I have you. Within two minutes, that song is on air. I'm like, come on. 
Come on. You know me. But isn't it the same that's also happening elsewhere? Our producer is able to read and understand no. music elsewhere. Listen, for you to be a producer, you must be able to read and write music. That's step number one. There's a lot of songs playing on radio right now. I'm telling you, hey, this song is off key. It sounds nice to me and you, <laughs> but <laughs> hey, I'm quiet. I didn't say no, shit. I didn't say anything. Man. I didn't say anything. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just saying that song and a lot of other songs that um, I don't blame the, the DJs. I don't blame, you know what I mean? Radio DJ, like Power FM, ZFM, Star FM. I don't blame them because this music comes through a section and they're just told to play it. You know what I mean? True, true. Zim true. Danso came out guns blazing. Everyone is there. And where is Zim Danso now? Where, what's the future of Zim Danso? Where do you see it going? What future is it? I can give... I don't look at Winky D as Zim Danso. No, he's not Zim Danso. I mean, Zim Danso... I, I, I don't know what happened. I'm a fan of it. I love it. Enzo's my... That's my nigga. You know what I mean? But I don't know understand um, what the formula was. They flooded the market. There was one time when Zim Danso was, I think two, two, two years back, it was everywhere. Even when you went to a wedding, they were playing Zim Danso everywhere. Corporate functions, they wanted to hear Zim Danso. But that's as far as it went. Because these guys never sat down to formulate, could you guys, how are we going to money terrorize this thing? How are we going to make money from this thing? They never sat down. What they did was started beefing amongst themselves. Have you ever seen two broke artists fighting? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought the beef also helps create the culture and create like content. If you're going to create beef, let me, let me teach you a trick about industrial beef. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See this conversation we're having? Yeah. This is what we need to do. Could you kind of tweet us all broadcast? You know, you're a song. You're dissing me. Yes. Me. And that song must go for about three months. Mm -hmm. I won't retaliate. You know what I mean? I will just comment, comment here and there. But everybody's now waiting for Chuck Nosis' response. Beef so has to make money and then I also make money there. Beef has to be orchestrated. Stan and Mudiwa, people don't know, but I feel there's some, th th those niggas I call each other. I also feel the same. I also feel the same. I see how it runs. And, and it's a very clever thing. And I love it. I'll laugh as Mudiwa posts this time or post some stupid shit about it. These guys know each other. It's working. Nas, Jay-Z, uh, the list goes on. It's, I love it's, it's, love. They, they had quite a good beef. They could have made money from it. But they made money. They made money. Do you know Sting 2014 was the biggest Zim Danzo event, monetary wise, number no, no, no. wise. The promoter of the event made money. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the business. But they also made money. The artists made money. They've not yeah. disclosed how much, but I know from that show, I'm told some artists went to buy cars. Not they got paid. That. They got paid. Nice. Cars. What I want to, uh, what I really want for this, I, I want a, a situation whereby people can press the reset button. Mm -hmm. This industry, it needs to be flushed out completely. They need to go back to the drawing board and change the blueprint completely. That's what that, I feel. Uh, what steps, what steps would need to be taken to do that? First, they need to understand that this is a business plot. Entertainment is now a business. In your mind, that's what the moment you get that through your head, you know what 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 steps to take. The moment you understand this is money, that uh, the population of Zimbabwe has got what uh, is it 14 million? How many people in Zimbabwe? About 14 uh, million. 14, 15, yeah. Yeah. You need to do the math and you need to come together with the marketing team. You guys need to strategize. Even the content, what you're gonna sing about, what you're gonna rap about, you need a target market. You know what I mean? You, don't, you only start singing gibberish when you've now identified the target market, then everything that comes out of your mouth becomes dope. You know what I mean? But until then, if you don't have a target market that my music is for these kind of people, you don't know what you're doing because you know I just want to sing. Sing what? Go sing nursery rhymes or something then. You know what I mean? This is a, it's a formula. Then we got a lot of female vocalists that have never gone for voice training. They don't even know the R, A, E, or O's of singing. 
doesn't know I'm an mm -hmm. R&B artist. No, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Who listens to R&B in Zimbabwe? A, a lot of people, actually. I'm talking but about lo local. No, no, no. Local, mm, some, but I know like a lot of the international R&B gets a lot of, you know, listeners. Yeah, you know what I mean? And the moment you try to sound like the international people, it becomes a problem too, you see. There's a lot of haters in this country. This, <laughs> that's that's yeah, another really topic that we did not step on. There's a lot of haters in this country. When somebody's making it, the next group of people who are in line, who are supposed to be helping you, push you to the top, yes. and then when you to the top, pulling you, down. you pull them up. They don't want that. Like, no, 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 no. This guy's going too far. God's going to be China. You get what I mean? That's the other problem in this country. They don't want to see you climb to the top. No. They don't want to see that. You know what I mean? What's, let me give you an example. This is what people didn't know about. I'm going to use Bad Boy Records as an example. Yes. Right? Puffy, Biggie Smalls, Biggie Smalls. Trick Mac, yeah. uh, Fick Evans. Uh, who, okay. A couple of names. So what they do is they come up with a five-year plan. This is a stable. It's a record label. So they come up with a five-year plan for each artist. Remember when Craig Mack was coming out, Biggie Smalls was coming up. Yeah, true. And Biggie Smalls was doing remixes of Craig Max's music. You know what I mean? So it's a formula. You know what I mean? We will all support Craig Mack for now, do songs with Faith Evans, Biggie Smalls, um, all the other artists in the stable. So when we go, we go as a unit. It's Craig Mack's show, 100% of that money. He will probably get, uh, say, 60% uh, of that money, the 40% is shared amongst everybody else for a period of five years. You get me? Then when Craig, ran, Craig Max starts running out of steam, he's falling out, you have another card you can pull another out. Another card that's coming through. Yes, but this other card that you're pulling out, he or she was always there featuring on Craig Max music, so they know who this person is. A lot of record companies but, do but, that. But, but, but I would you agree that in Zimbabwe, the impression, the thought, the white uh, thought is that um, for plot to make it, Chucky has to fall. For Chucky to make it, plot has to fall. There is no appreciation that they can be Jar present doing well. They, they can be Winky D doing well. They, they can be Enzo Aisha doing well. Uh, you know, they can be uh, Cynthia Mari. You know, there can be so many artists in one go who are making it. Maybe one or two that have like the biggest hits. They don't want to share the cake. The cake is too small. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't, they don't want to share the cake. The cake is too small. So at the end of the day, everybody wants the cake. To the extent where people now want the flour, they want the water. They want to know who the, you know what I mean? they want to know who the bakery is. They want everything. You know what I mean? They don't want the bread. They want the whole bakery. They want the, the chef. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> niggas get greedy. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Plus, let me give another example. Let me take South Africa, for example. Yes. You know, South Africa, there are like four big names in South Africa that you have to be part of to come up. Oskido, uh -huh. one of the biggest Oskido, yeah. in South yeah. Africa. Yeah. Solastic. You know what I mean? Afro Tain. Afro, yeah. Afro Tain. Yeah. Tira and his boys. You get me? So in order for you to come up, you have to go through these people. And these people, sometimes they'll help, sometimes they won't. But what it does is that there's a monopoly going on. And they're not stopping, they're not like stepping on each other's toes. They're sharing. Maybe it's a population thing. I don't know. Maybe there but are I more mean, numbers. The monopoly, you still see some, some of, from uh, Lipopo, Shoma Jose popping up. The next That's year, awesome. you've got Master KG. That's what I'm saying. They go out and look for the talent because you don't. They don't want to get bored easily, so they go out looking for the next biggest thing. Quick, quick. Problem in Zim now. I don't get it when they start beefing when stables start beefing with that other stable, and I'm like, what exactly do you guys have to show that you're beefing with Ningi Ningi for what? How about a collaboration? How about a collaboration? Why are you beefing for? We've got one radio station in this country for crying out. I'm not talking anything bad about ZFM or Power FM, but Star FM is like the radio station. You get what I mean? We've got one TV, we've got one TV station. 
Could be seen. How, yeah, how about you guys sit down, collaborate, and make this work than beefing with each other? And you guys are broke. You got no money, but you're beefing with each other. What are you fighting for? <laughs> what are you fighting for? And then okay. the, these Nama Awards, the Zima Awards, you're awarding these musicians. Sometimes I wonder, why are you awarding them for? What is this award for? Some, some of the artists, we only see them at our ceremonies. The next day, you don't even know them. You don't I've hear never them. heard of this guy. What is the award for? You get me? People need to stop bigging each other up when it's not necessary, when it's not required. You get me? Yeah, I get you. I was once a judge for a talent show. They never called me back again. <laughs> I... <laughs> they never called me back at Book Cafe. Monday night, open mic station. Yeah. Brought in about 20 contestants singing and doing this, and my fellow judges kept lying. Oh, if you go back home and you practice and you do this, I think maybe you've got a bright future. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Come on. This person can't think shit. Why are you lying to this person? Why are you wasting their time? Real talk. And I did it. It was what? They never called me back again. Um, I didn't. I wasn't out blunt like that. But I was like, guys, real talk. This is not for you. Or maybe the kind of music you're trying to sing right now. I don't know what it is, but what I heard right now, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to waste your time and my time saying, no, I think you need, no, 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 no. Listen, being a musician is not good to you. have got talent. It's something you're born with. That's what people don't know. Yeah, yeah. Second, mm -hmm. There's a certain swag that certain people have. You know, in high school, there's always that one guy when you're like, this yeah, is going to be the head boy. He's going to be the head boy. Even in Form 1, you're like, he's going to be the head boy. You've, he's got that all around him. Yeah, that's, I, I get you. You know what I mean? There's that chick whereby all the other girls hate because they know she bang. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that. The yeah, moment true. you want to embrace that, that you want to have problems in life. Personally, that's the way I see it. <laughs> wow, awesome, man. This, this, this has been great. I mean, I definitely want a part two of this conversation. Quite interesting. Mm -hmm. You've touched on so many uh, important things, but um, uh, before we, we 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 close off, um, what 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 role is Jackie playing right now as far as showbiz? Apart from uh, Fiesta, Fiesta, what else are you are you working? On? Um, right now, it's funny you ask that question because right now I I just got all the cameras, all mm. the all the lights, all the gear that was in my son's room. I brought them out. Um. We're trying to go back to television. Okay, great. There's a sitcom that we're working on with uh, African Fire, uh, oh, Boca. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're That's working on a project. Yes, it's, uh, it's a project that we're still, since we're still fine tuning it. And then secondly, uh, entertainment with Chuck. Uh, we're going, I'm going back on air. Uh, we might change the name. I might be behind the scenes for productions and team. I may not be the one doing it. Why my industry entertainment is dead. My company, Stratosphere Events, I run an events company. Um, we're not making any money right now. COVID has really turned off the tap. Right yes. now, I'm spending, yes. I'm spending money. I'm not replenishing my stock. You know what I mean? I'm not making money at the end of the day. And the way COVID is, we're looking for three, four months of this going on. So we need to find another source of revenue not just for me, but for the entertainment industry, we need to find another source of revenue or else all this fat is going to go in a few weeks. I'm going to be all skinny, broke, hungry. You know what I mean? Skinny like me. <laughs> yeah. So the idea now is um, I'm going back on television uh, because we're trying to resuscitate my other talents that I have because why we got up, I got to make money. Yeah, it's it's, right, uh, right. Fiesta, Fiesta blew up so quickly and we, we made lots of money from it. You know what I mean? So we paid money to Sasha, Mapurisa, Kabza, Vigro. They were supposed to come down just before this shit popped off. So all the money yeah. went that side. So right now, I'm not saying I'm broke, but I need to get sure. going. Get going. Get, yeah. You know what I mean? Luckily, um, in the past, as I came up, I've got a hospitality background. Yes. I can always go back to some of these things. But entertainment as a whole right now in this country, until the government comes up with a plan, yeah, my wife. It's going to be tight. 
Oh yeah. And um, the yeah, it's really. I think the difference with maybe this side is that um, the government responded quickly. They've put in place like fifty one yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, euro just for the creative industries, and mm. already they are starting to 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 give support to artists and venues and stuff. But um, post COVID, right now internet is disrupting. Uh, yeah. A lot of activities now happening on internet. Uh, yeah. Post COVID, what's your? How do you see the entertainment scene looking like? Uh, people are not going to run out quickly and embrace it. Huh? Um, we don't know how long this is going to last for, but I don't think if the security, um, the lockdown has been lifted, everyone's going to come out. No, you know what I mean. It's gonna be baby steps, you know. What I mean, it's gonna be baby steps, and it's gonna, it's still gonna affect us in a way where because people don't have money right now. People don't have money to come out for entertainment right now. The landlords are looking at you like this, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I want my money. Yeah, and there's a lot of things happening in the background that uh, entertainment is gonna not just for Zim worldwide. It's gonna struggle for a bit. Because there's going to be a lot of do's and don'ts. There's going to be a lot of precautions put into it. And then um, hopefully October, November, December, maybe, you know what I mean? The floodgates will open again. And then we have one of the biggest fiestas ever. You know what I mean? Oh, That's yeah. what I'm waiting for. But uh, right now we're trying to stay safe, you know. Um, hope not to get it. Stay alive, you know. Yeah, but... Yeah advantage of COVID right now is that it's giving me time to be very creative. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I'm learning something on YouTube and learning a lot of things. So I'm, I'm educating myself right now. It's not yeah. that apart from drinking bottles of wine every day, it's not that <laughs> <laughs> you know? Wow, great, great. It's my third Jameson. My third. No, wine. Ah, cool. Jameson will, Jameson will. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, it's been great. It's been awesome speaking to you. And yeah, you know, man, it was, it was, it was uh, such an interesting conversation. And I know definitely it's going to also create more conversations because you touched on certain things that people are somehow scared to talk about. But I feel the moment that we start talking about these things, that's the moment we start dealing with them. And it's actually for the best of the entertainment industry. And um, Enough respect for your contribution um, from days back until now. You continue to contribute towards the entertainment industry in Zimbabwe. And yeah. hopefully we hope that you're going to plug some of our Zimbabwean artists to your brothers and sisters there in Ghana. Uh, we see what they're doing. We, uh, let me just tweet a little thing. Um, I went back home a few weeks before this started, yeah. uh, made some links. So... We were bringing in a couple of names from Nigeria and Ghana. I, I don't want to mention, I don't get any hopes up, but we had actually bridged a kind of an arrangement with them and we're bringing them before the end of the year. That was the vision for Fiesta to actually escalate real quick. We had some big names that were coming, you know what I mean? Big, like really big. And then this happened. So after this, I had to go back home and revisit the contracts and everything else but it will happen definitely because um collaborations need to be done a lot of true, artists true, from Zimbabwe true. and Ghana and West Africa they need to merge and do a lot of that great great yeah. well ladies and gentlemen thank you so much it's been a great conversation one hour of conversation talking to Chuck Nosis Chuck Aisha <laughs> uh, the man behind um Heart of the Rhythm uh entertainment with Chuck Fiesta Fiesta and I like the Fiesta radio it's dope. You know, I was watching DJ Eve. It's super yeah. dope. It's dope. And, um, well, he's an entertainment specialist. He's also from the hospitality background. He's worked for a couple of uh, hospitality institutions. And yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's quite a man of many skills and many talents. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who's tuned in uh, for staying on Ear Ground and watching our content. Please subscribe, like, and follow Facebook page, YouTube. Uh, and Instagram, and then we'll keep giving you the best of Zimbabwean content. And until next time, Chuck, one love. Peace. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right. So. <laughs>